Hello and welcome to Ferrari Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Kitty Hawk's brand new 148 scale. This is the SU30 SM Flanker H. So we've got the canard two seat flanker in other words. Again, love hate relationship with Kitty Hawk. I love their subjects. They do some of the best kits actually out there. Just I always find that they just need a little bit of polishing off, shall we say. So their instructions can be a little bit iffy, uh, a little bit vague or downright confusing. Uh, and sometimes it's just the odd little bits and pieces. So I'm hopeful that this actually might be turning a corner. Anyway, as you can see, good box art, like that. Very nice uh, depiction of a SU30SM, as you can see down in there. All right, some of the options that we've got in the box. And again, you've got the three, obviously probably the most famous one. So we've got the Knights one up there. We've got the one in the... Um, Eggplant, that's the colour. I'm just trying to think of it. Eggplant type colour, which actually I really like. It's a nice colour. And we've got the other one in that sort of standard flanker blue around on there. Okay, so your kit number for this one is KH80171. Okay, and around on here on the other side, we see a little bit more. As you can see, unfortunately, my box did take a little bit of a hit on the slow boat from China. So, in the box, we can see pretty stuffed box as we can see down in here so that's actually quite nice both fuse large hives again flanker is not a small aircraft okay so we have that we've got our instruction booklet which has got all our color call outs and things like that in there as well so that's quite nice but wow okay wasn't expecting that at all it looks like we have and they are resin nozzles Arr, in a nice little Thing. Okay, look, we'll look at those properly in a moment. Okay, so multiple screws, as you can imagine, the flanker is a big jet. We've got lots of parts down in here. You can see some of the parts have come off the screws by the looks of it. But as you can see, this is going to be a big review. We've got lots and lots of clear parts buried amongst all of this as well. So that looks odd. We've got single seat and two seat clear parts as well. Okay, that's keep an eye out in there looks like we've got normal nozzles as well just down in here fully detailed engine which is really nice and there is our photo etch with our uh, uh, little color decal sheet okay which isn't as big as I thought I thought it'd be bigger than that anyway as always let's have a start in the instructions so as we know you sort of have to unpeel it to to get these which are a little bit odd the way they do it but they always have done so sometimes it can get a little bit confusing because they have half here and half on the other one i've actually got it's different aircraft in various ways anyway as we can see we got the parts call outs and again resin nozzles nice little touch with that i wasn't expecting that and then we are straight into it so usual sort of thing in with the cockpit going through the various stages you see we've got some nice detail photo etch it always makes me laugh uh photo etch uh toe loops which is uh, absolutely great because you'll never see them. Anyway, those being fitted down in there, we've got the seats, which actually don't look too bad at all. Cockpit generally looks very nice all the way down into this one. Lots of details, so putting like the rears in there and everything else as well, so that looks pretty nice. Front wheel well section being fitted in because I assume that is going to lock up underneath. Okay, then we're back to the other side. So we're going into the engine area down in here. So we've got these sort of tailpipe areas or starts for the engines coming off the back uh, around about the gear uh, areas and then obviously we've got the engines and again nice touch that we do get fully detailed engines right the way through and i think those would be lending themselves very nicely and i'm just wondering if we've got it like this and then obviously if we've got resin ones as well i'm wondering if you can get away with not actually putting the engines in so you could have an engine displayed that's what i'm thinking because you've got two nozzles it only be the fans uh, so we'll have to have a look at that Anyway, as you can see, wheel wells being fitted down into this one. And then obviously we've got the tail area. This is the sort of stinger, as I call it, that goes between the flankers engines at the back with all the flare, the flare and chaff uh, pods in there. Standard flanker-esque way of going together, as we can see. So it's that normal way of having the top half and the bottom half. So you're going to be popping all these areas in, not forgetting, obviously, your all important canards uh, down into this one as it goes through on there like that. Looks like we've got, actually, that's the radar. So we've got the radar going in there as well. Usual way that the actual intakes go in, obviously it's always a burden because you're gonna have this seam at the back. So it'd be interesting to see 
how they're going to go about doing that okay nice details obviously going in the tops of the rails for the demisting piping and all the rest of it being fitted down in there intakes being fitted down over which obviously make up your wheel well as well we do get a detailed gun with the cover for it as well going in there and then this is the really nice touch with this kit and it is a highlight for me is obviously we do have the radar dome with the brake underneath okay so again really nice way of displaying that if you wanted to have it open you can see some of that in there there is another piece of uh, flanker <laughs> again it's just a bit odd how they do so you've got the knight's one on the inside you imagine that's the that's the front of that oh yeah okay it gets confusing but you know what i mean okay and then obviously we've got nice details as well because we've got the engine in the top and we've got engine open covers onto this one so that can be seen on there as well which is nice got the parachute area at the back as well so you can have that shown open if you wanted to and then you've got your nozzles so again you've got your nozzles and i assume like they've got them obviously drooping down when it's in the power down they're hanging down so if you're going in flight you just use the normal ones but obviously you've got these ones as well gear multi-part flat spots on the tires which is nice as well right the way through then you've got which is always going to be the weak point with any type of flanker kit it's a very fine there's a lot these wings are quite big and it's just a tab very old school way of doing it and i'm sure they know what they're doing but it is literally just a little tab in there flaps we've still got that single way i'm not going to go too much about it but there's another flanker hitting the market very soon by a brand new company and they do beautiful flaps for the flanker family uh, anyway that's those down in there gear obviously nose wheel being fitted down in there we've actually got the fod guard on the back as well so it doesn't flick anything up into the intakes obviously nose wheel being fitted pretty standard right the way through and then obviously we've got the actuators and the actual gear doors being fitted onto these right the way through okay and as you can see you've got the angle of attack sensor and pitots being fitted down onto the front and then obviously all the aerials underneath it refueling probe you can have open or closed again another nice touch if you want to have it displayed open or doing it in flight and here we have the radar so we've actually got the radar set on the front of this one uh, as I say I don't know too much about Russian radars to be honest so uh, it'll be interesting to do a little bit of research on that one okay and then obviously we've got the canopy being fitted for the internals and again right the way through we've got more photo etch as well for the bars down on this one and then that radar being fitted in and again depending if you're having the old type radar and the new type of radar I assume being fitted down in there as well okay then we've obviously got tailplanes being fitted down up onto the top so those are being fitted on the wingtip pylons being on that one the combing for the actual uh, sighting system being fitted onto the front there and then again nice touch bang up to date we've got the twin pylon system as well being fitted underneath there and putting those on and that is it nice color call out and some interesting uh obviously observations for the colors for inside the radar because let's face it it would be pretty difficult so again we've got all of those we've got the guns and then obviously we've got some heat markings so you can see exactly what type of colors you will be doing on the actual engine so that is a very nice touch indeed actually quite exciting it does look like a good step up in the right direction uh of what we've been seeing recently so in here we have the decals so we can squeeze these out okay so down in here we have the decals which actually look pretty nice no real problem with those at all so a couple of little ones just to look at we've got instrument panels decals down in here but again looking at the quality good solid color running right the way through these for the actual knights which is obviously always going to be a problem but again they all look very nice indeed and then obviously we've got the various ones underneath like that so yes very nice indeed okay we have got a small piece of photo etch as we saw before uh, but again pretty much showing everything so we've got those chaff and flare buckets at the back here we've got some of the, the sway braces for the actual areas we've got harnesses and those internal parts as we saw before so again not much but really i don't think you really need too much more on there okay just slip these back in keep them all nice and safe okay so next up is the engines just pop those down in there so this is its resin engines so obviously we do get two in a very nice kitty hawk stroke panda box okay so in here 
and get it out. There we go. So obviously it's got a little tab in there, but generally, it, okay, it's not the sharpest molding, but it's quite nice because you've got fully internal detail down in there as well. But the external, as you can see, that looks very nice indeed. Okay, it's not perfect. As I said, it's not the sharpest injection um, resin molding I've seen because there is little tiny marks in it and things like that. When you're looking at resin, you're looking usually at pure type of quality, but there is the odd lump and bump, a little bit of flash and obviously taking that out. But it is nice because obviously it's fully detailed inside and you're not gonna have a seam line. And from what I can see in there, it looks very, very clear indeed. But again, it's a nice little option because let's face it, there is a company uh, that does an aftermarket resin uh, droot exhausts uh, out there. So it does save you going down that route because they're not too cheap and they take forever to turn up. But anyway, very nice job on those. Clear parts as we are here. We don't want that one because it's a single seat. Okay, so it obviously has genuine bits. We can just grab a knife. Okay, so moment of truth. So there is a seam line running right the way through the middle. You can probably see the distortion made from it. But to be honest with you, the camera is exaggerating that a lot okay and unfortunately you have got one right in the middle as well but also it's not the most clearest you can probably see there's quite a lot of distortion as the camera moves over the lines so it may be a case of having to dip this one and try and sort of clarify and clean it up generally though you've got your lights obviously seeker heads various things standard huds all the usual landing lights and all the rest of it just down under here so as you pretty much would expect. But nice details right the way down in here. This is all three dimensional in here. It's not just flat. It has all got all the textures you might imagine just down here in the back. And again, good solid canopy on that. There's a little bit of flash on there, but generally no problem at all. Okay, so the big bits, which the bit we all want to see. Okay, right. <clears throat> the huge large. So Top and bottom fuselage halves, as we can see. So, if I just stick on a slightly different camera for me. Okay, so as you can see, it is going to be a hell of a lump when she is full size, but looking very, very nice indeed. And then straight away, if you look on the close up, we can see beautiful, good, clean, sharp. In fact, that's actually, I would say, have to say, hazarded a guess, putting my neck on the line, probably the finest detail I've seen Kitty Hawk done yet, because that is incredibly crisp, very, very nice. I'm trying to catch it in the light for you, so it stands out. I can't see any areas where it sort of wears off to nothing, which is pretty much standard Kitty Hawk and all the rest of it. So that actually does look very, very nice. And again, trying to catch it in the light for you which is a bit difficult in this color plastic. There we go. Good riveting detail right the way through. I have to say that actually is very, very nice indeed. Down here as well, this is obviously for opening up if you wanted to, you have the option to cut this open, to have it open and they've even taken the time to do the internal textures right the way through for this as well. So that again, it's a very nice touch. Internally, you've got a little bit of framework down there for the sides of the cockpit as you're putting all of that in. But I have to say that actually looks very, very nice. Again, my only worry was looking at this now is that this is where obviously your canards are gonna come through and one little knock and they're gonna break. Because that's a very, very thin, old school, just a hole and it'll be a tab system on the back here for putting those through. So again, that may be a little bit of a weak spot, but generally overall, I think the detail on this is beautiful. Very, very nice indeed. The underside. Okay, and again, you've got loads going down under here with all the access panels and all the areas, and they're all good, clean, right up to these edges. Okay. Also, the other thing as well, and I am looking for it, I can't actually see a mould line, a, a sort of mould line going through from the ejection moulding, which we've seen in previous uh, aircraft and things like that. So it looks like they've nailed that down now and got it tucked out of the way, because unless I'm missing the beat, I can't see one. So again, very, very nicely done as well. And up here on the front, could this be Kitty Hawk's best kit yet? Certainly looks it so far, I have to say. 
Very, very nice. Internally, obviously, there's nothing in here whatsoever. Right, where do we begin? I'll tell you what, let's start down here on the bottom and we'll work our way through all of these. Okay, so next up, we've got the big old sprue here. Obviously, it's got intakes, various things going on here. We've got the gun. We've got a lot of parts which are threatening to fall off, which is a little bit of a worry. Okay, but starting up here, you've got the intake which again, we can see it sort of here. We have got a mold line in here, but it's very, very faint. Not gonna take much to get rid of that. Okay, so that's actually very nice. You can see lots of riveting detail. This thing will look lovely with a wash on it. Even if you do an eggplant, give it a light wash. Okay, but there's the gun, which is nicely detailed and obviously all the little lumps and bumps areas. Okay, we've got pitos, all the antennas down the side here looking quite nice. There's that other intake, which actually looks very, very nice indeed. Okay, good job on that. So again, there is a small line as you can probably see it here. And again, it's going to be a pain to get rid of it because you've got riveting all around it. But I'm thinking maybe just a light scrape uh, and then you can get away with getting rid of that. But generally, very nice. But here on the side, if I can get the camera to lock in. There we go. Come on, camera. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful work. Very, very nice. Very sharp, good, crisp, detailed, all that riveting. Okay, over on the other side, we've got some of the uh, instrument panel walls, various things like that up there, intakes, doors. These are these nice ports for the engines, okay, where obviously it goes from intake to the actual first stage compressor. Nice job on there. We've got the ventral. So again, a couple of different tails down in here as well for the actual uh, brake chute. That's the brake chute just there. And again, more antennas down in there. Intake wise, unfortunately, we have got some ejector pins down in here. How much of this you'd see? Anyone's guess. Okay, they are buried quite deep inside there. So that's quite nice. Okay, so we've got the tail planes, some of the details. Again, the details are absolutely jumping on here. This is that part which is for the site, the old pirate site. Okay, and as you can see, there's a lot going on on here and beautiful, beautiful details. Actually, I am starting to fall in love with this kit. This is absolutely fantastic. Okay, so, Obviously down here, I call it the stinger, this is where your chaff and flare pods all are, goes down between the engines, all the various parts, gear door, beautiful roofs for the gear. Got lots of piping in there, lots of detail, so that's very nice to see straight off the bat. Okay, obviously the uh, pitot tubes, things like that, various antennas. This is the radar, and again, nice details right the way in this, and internally as well. You can see you've got all the framing work and the various things going through on there, which is nice. The canards, and as we were saying, that's a very thin bit of plastic holding on what will be something you're gonna catch your elbow on occasionally. So, yeah, very, very fine. I was hoping it might be a little bit more substantial, the locating joint for that forward canard. Unfortunately, it's not. Over here, as you can see, loads going on. Look at the detail down in there, beautiful work with all the riveting and the various parts as we come to love really on the flanker uh, is the details onto it. None of this composite rubbish, so it's just boring and plain, loads of detail and we like that. Down in here, the gear. So obviously we've got the wheels. There is a flat spot on them. Good uh, textures around on the outside of the tires, which is really nice. The radar system, okay, or one of them. Various nice ones down in there. And again, the details down here in the actual wheel well which are absolutely gorgeous right the way up. Working our way up, we've obviously got the instrument panel. I assume this is the rear one. Uh, so obviously you're gonna have the parts going down in there. There is a little bit of flash. It looks a little bit ugly, this part, for some reason. Uh, the rest of them are all pretty clean, but that one just looks a little bit flashy. A little bit of clean up and I think you'd be fine. On the blind side, Again, we don't have an ejector pin, which is a nice touch down in here in the gear. And then obviously these fins, beautifully done as well. No problem with those. We've got no ejector pins down here on these canards, which is really nice indeed. So yeah, good stuff on that. That's looking fantastic. Okay, whilst we're in here, let's have a look at wings and things. This little pirate site, because he's out of the bag, I'm just gonna pop down in there okay so here is our wings again very nice no problem at all with these good level of detail really very nice need so we've got the flaps 
As you can see here on the back, lovely details and obviously the main wings. Again, gorgeous details right the way over those. Then we've got covers. Okay, so these are sort of just closed different types of covers on there for the actual engines. There's no detail on those at all, so interesting to see. And again, tips and areas. Looks like there's a small sink mark maybe just running in these. It's very fine, and I think by the time you've got paint on it, you wouldn't really notice it, but both of those have got them. You can see it in this one a little bit more obvious, but again, I think by the time you've got some paint on it, you're not going to notice, it's only because the light's catching it. On the underside, as we can see again, very nicely done, beautiful stuff, and again, good level of detail and it's one of those you are going to have to open up the pylon so if you're doing it as a night's one or something else like that and you didn't want pylons on obviously you've got the option on the clothes so it's basically both the same and then down on here so different tail areas things like that beautifully done again both sides really very very nicely done okay right so in here we have the engine Okay, so this is a, let me get it out of the bag, a match pair, because obviously it's just left and right exactly the same. So, as you can see, big old sprue, lots going down in here for the engine detail. We've got some uh, sort of electronic warfare pods. I don't think call them ECM pods anymore, do they? Okay, so running around at the top, lots of little details, beautiful uh, first stage, sorry, that'll be the tail, I assume, uh, compressor. Okay, so this is the one out. The flame holder for the afterburner, which is very nice, which will obviously fit over this little guy. That's the interior, which I didn't realise the shock cone off the nose was that big for the first stage compressor. So that's huge. Okay, and then again, nice work on the engine. The engine looks very, very nicely detailed. A little bit of plumbing and wiring running around it already, but obviously you can liven that up yourself. Okay, different types of wheels. So again, we are going to see different types of flankers coming up here. The underside of the intake louver doors open or close, so you've got an option down in there. And again, lots of parts, small parts for the gear, various parts down in here. We do have a different nozzle, so this is just in the normal open configuration straight back. So if you were doing it in flight, something else like that, no problem. This is that beautiful twin racks for those, so very nice as well. So we've got the pylons, there's those pods. We have got parts of the seats down in here, and then a little bit further on, we've got other parts of the seat. So as you can see it down in there like that. And generally, no problem. Down in this area for the engine, it's nicely, we've got all the details. This, you're not gonna be in there anyway. So that's actually very nice indeed. Okay, so real, no problem with that. That's very nice. Okay, <clears throat> so I was wondering where the nose was and we have just found it. So another big old sprue we can see lots going on down in here indeed so again we have got it straight away i'm just noticing it looks like it's a little bit of sinkage on this slat on the front which is because it is one piece which again is very very nice because that's basic normally people do it as a two piece but this is we can catch it down in here a one piece slat running right the way around the front just like that so that's actually very nice indeed and then we've got the various stuff as you can see up here this is for the radar uh, for the details for that we've got the nose uh, very nice job we've got the other half or a different type of stinger set down in the back again flanker family let's face it it's a bit, bit generic okay and again more radar parts for different types of radars Another no section, again, depending which one you're doing. Over here, we've actually got more cockpit instrument panels, front and rear, again, different versions. And then different intake uh, gear door areas as well. So again, we've got multiple parts down in here. Again, I haven't done my homework, so I don't know which is which, but as you can see, really very nice, good, sharp details all the way through for the actual gear. So that actually looks very, very nice indeed. Okay, refueling probe, last see just at the top here, looks pretty good. Again, more details for down here. I assume this is the older flanker family, and then obviously the 30s uh, use the newer one with the more upgraded internals, but again, depending which one you're using. And on the blind side, to be honest, very nice indeed. No problems there. Okay, so cockpit areas. We're assuming this is specific then to our flanker because 
Well, perhaps not. I don't know, actually, because this is, looks like it's got a very old analog type. So this is just the standard UB cockpit, and then obviously you're pinching parts out of it for it. Again, they have done a few different types on here, and this is showing it. So we'll have a, a run across, okay? Conveyor belt style. So we've got the actual main speed brake, which, to be honest, is quite nice. There's no ejector pins on the underside. So that's very nice indeed. Okay, and then we've actually got the cockpit, which how much of that is used with the other one is anyone's guess different bulkheads obviously different versions down in here again let's face it we often joke about the uh, flanker family you get so many different types out of it with only a few little adjustments so that's clearly what we're doing here okay so this will be a case of making sure you go through your instructions and finding which bits have nothing to do with this kit whatsoever okay again this is just a standard su27 sprue i assume because it's gear doors and things like that so again just being careful which ones you're looking at but generally it looks quite nice and then again nice job on the actual door so we don't have any ejector pins inside the doors which is a nice touch various parts we've got no sink marks on the doors or anything else like that that looks all pretty good no problems down in there and then inside of these gear doors we've got some nice details right the way through and again ejector pin free which is really what we like to see. And that is, Steve, your flanker. Is it their finest one yet? Again, I wish, and I'm just gonna, before I say it, yeah, see, they don't. I think what realistically they need to do, and again, this is me picking faults in them because I can, uh, is to underline here which bits you're using and which bits you're not. Let's face it, most manufacturers out there take their instructions and will grey out areas you don't use. There's probably, I would say, four at least different types of flanker in this box, okay, from different versions, uh, old obviously right the way up to the new ones. It'd be nice to know what, exactly what we're doing here because this is a brand new tool one. It is very nice. It's a beautiful, I have to say, a beautiful, I will say it again, front end on this. The way that this is molded and the design and everything, it looks absolutely spot on to me. And again, it's the canard type of flanker. So let's face it, this thing's got flankers. Normally you've either got nozzles at the back which obviously can move uh, or they have canards this has got both so this thing must be an absolute aerobatic monster okay uh, but generally very very nice again if they put down in here which parts you're not using there'd be a lot more clarity in the actual build to make it a little bit more straightforward because there is obviously a hell of a crossover in this actual kit highlights for me beautiful to see we've got a radar which we can see we can have it in the open position various things like that so that's quite nice so thinking along with dioramas you could do that and at the same time we've got fully detailed engines we've got the ports open at the back here so if you wanted to you could have them open or closed okay right the way through you've also got the opportunity if you wanted to to open up these rear ones as well to have those open so you can have a lot of engines showing whilst having them installed or you could actually take the engine clean out and have it displayed out of the actual model which i think is a very very nice touch to it so the kit itself is lending itself to different options right the way through you could do it in flight and have a beautiful looking model you could have it on the ground powered down and everything else like that and have it all opened up and have a great looking flanker as well is it the finest flanker I've seen yet? I have to say yes. I think this is probably the best detailed flanker of them all to date. And let's face it, everybody does a flanker now. It's, you know, they're like buses. You don't see any for a while and then everybody's doing them. But this one I think is literally head and shoulders. Does it go together well? I don't know. I don't know a single person yet who's built this kit, so I can't even sort of comment on it. Would I build it? Absolutely. If I was gonna be building a flanker now, this is the kit I would do because it looks absolutely gorgeous with all the metal work and the bits and pieces that you could do to this one as well. The weathering, the things like that, it is a fantastic kit. And again, the great thing about this kit is if you wanted to do it straight out of the box and literally just close everything up, you could do, or you could do a little bit more work to it and have it all shown and open and you have a fantastic kit along like that. Another nice touch is the resin engines. A little bit crude compared to other ones that are out there, but considering they're part of the box and you've got powered down their nozzles and all the rest of it, it's a nice touch instead of having them done in the traditional plastic as we've seen before. So there we go. That is Kitty Hawk's beautiful 148 scale SU. 30 SM, also known as the Flanker H.